In this talk, I'm going to present a CWL pipeline for quickly and reliably assembling next generation sequencing reads from large scale viral and bacterial clinical strain surveillance studies. Surveillance for drug resistance in the area of infectious diseases requires collecting thousands of samples from geographically diverse populations of patients and performing DNA sequencing of key genes from a disease-causing bacterium or virus. These DNA sequences are examined for mutations that could confer drug resistance, such as mutations within or near the binding site of the drug molecule. Detection of such mutations triggers subsequent laboratory assays to be performed to determine resistance phenotype. This resistance monitoring is often done before the drug is submitted for regulatory approval and it may continue afterwards through the efforts of commercial, public health and academic institutions. Currently, the most popular sequencing platform in such large-scale surveillance projects is Illumina NGS. For bacterial targets, whole genome shotgun WGS of bacterial isolates is typically performed. For viral surveillance, a PCR amplification step with one or possibly several overlapping pairs of primers is followed by a shotgun library construction. In both cases, the sequencing method generates a large number of short by highly over-redundant paired reads per each clinical samples. We need to assemble the reads into the contiguous consensus sequences from each sample. These consensus contigs would be used outside of this software in a downstream analysis of potential resistance causing mutations, frequency of mutations in the population and phylogenetic analysis. In order to be used in the context of clinical trials and other regulated environments, the tool should be amenable to integration into systems validated according to JCP guidelines. Ideally, the tool should be built from open source peer-reviewed components in order to allow customizations for variability of future samples and easier isolation of failure modes by the user community. Functional requirements include the ability to launch and monitor the processing of large batches of samples using a graphical user interface UI with minimal parameter tuning and to examine the quality of the results QC. When considering the computational backends at a single sample level, we narrowed the choice to two representative tools designed to quickly extract the target genomic region from WGS datasets. Both tools were primarily designed for describing dominant variants in the sample relative to the best mentioned reference, but they could be adapted for our purpose of assembling the consensus sequence. The first tool, the SRST2 software, is based on the mapping of reads to alternative target references and then reporting the matching reference alleles. With any read mapping approach, the ability to call novel indels would suffer with the increasing size of the indels, especially at the edge of the reference region. Moreover, presence of mixed subpopulations in viral shotgun PCR reads from a single sample with possible overlapping indels and single nucleotide polymorphism SNPs under highly variable coverage would make separation of genomes phasing even more difficult, with the risk of generating chimeric consensus sequences increasing. As the core assembly backend for a single sample, we selected the approach represented by Ariba package, that first recruits clusters, reads to the alternative references under permissive nucleotide dissimilarity limit, roughly 20%, and then creates a range of de novo assemblies of each read cluster, followed by a selection of assembly that best matches the reference in each cluster. The built-in assembly step of Ariba was typically creating fragmented assemblies when presented with shotgun amplicon sequencing reads from a respiratory syncytial virus RSV surveillance program. This was not surprising given that the original envisioned inputs of the Ariba algorithm were bacterial WGS reads. As typical for the Illumina shotgun library construction from PCR amplified clinical samples, our sets of RSV sequencing reads were characterized by a very high coverage variability skewed along the length of the genome within a single sample, from 5x to 40,000x coverage, and by a presence of genomic subpopulations within individual samples. We extended Ariba with our own custom plugin internal de novo assembly step that can cope with the shotgun amplicon assembly challenges and correctly build full-length viral genome consensus sequences. We implemented a complete portable distributed workflow that included parallel scatter over multiple samples, read trimming, wrapper of the Ariba execution for each sample, extraction of target regions with desired span of flanking sequences, 
filtering of results based on assembly metrics, and the generation of a combined dynamic web report, aggregating all samples. We have created a control and exploration UI using Galaxy Bioinformatics Workbench and JavaScript components. Galaxy sees the CWL workflow as a single sub-process job, launched from a Galaxy tool description. The tool runs Toil Workflow Engine, but executes CWL workflow on a distributed backend, such as Slorm HPC cluster. Thus, we use a hybrid architecture, where Galaxy provides operator UI through three separate tools, and the heavy lifting of the assembly protocol is done with a CWL workflow description. All cutoffs and many algorithm choices in the description uh, of the tool are exposed as UI elements, tunable by the user, with reasonable default values. We use Galaxy conditional UI elements to define presets. User can choose from a master scenario from a pull-down field, and that populates default values for a number of other fields. Galaxy provides its own native workflow support. However, Galaxy workflows can be developed only through the UI. They do have a JSON representation, but is not officially documented. Unlike in CWL, they are not composable. This means it is not possible to execute a Galaxy workflow as a step of another workflow. In CWL, JavaScript extension allows for a flexible reshaping of the dataset structures. These are the major processing stages of the main workflow. Read cleaning relies heavily on the BB tool Swiss Army knife of sequence manipulation tools, chained in a single step with Linux pipes to minimize disk access. Targeted de novo assembly using Ariba with a customized, we call it plugin, internal assembly protocol. Post assembly filtering to remove poorly assembled minor components and samples with mixed genomes, as well as to trim the resulting context if desired. Generation of a web report that provides QC metrics and genome browser views linked from the assembly summary tables. In our plugin assembly step, multiple independent rounds of a DNOVA assembly are performed by pre-filtering the adapter trim reference recruited reads on a grid of minimal length cutoffs, error correcting with tadpole, and performing the digital chimer coverage normalization on a grid of depths using BBNorm. Each independent assembly for a given combination of the read length and normalization depth is carried out by space assembler in single cell mode after merging overlapping paired end reads with BB merge. The context from each space assembly are processed with pylon polishing tool after mapping all originally recruited reads to the context using BB map. In order to account in the final consensus sequence for those mixed populations that were not split by spades into separate de novo contexts, we have expanded pylons support for the generation of the ambiguous IOPAC codes. The grid of the alternative assemblies is then used by the Ariba engine to perform its well-developed selection of the best reference matching assemblies. The user runs top-level Galaxy and JSMSTB tools in this sequence. Upload faster file with any number of alternative genomic references such as RSV A and B subtypes or different alleles of the bacterial gene of interest and generate a reference in the internal format of Ariba. Define wildcard file paths and the regular expressions for the file name components to build the multi-sample input manifest with paths to FASQ files and associated sample IDs. The files are searched under a restricted location on the serial file system and the wildcards can span multiple directory levels. Configure and run the main extraction tool that takes the prepared Ariba reference pack and multi-sample sequencing reads manifest as inputs and allows tuning of multiple parameters of the assembly protocol, each provided with a reasonable default value. The extraction tool generates a number of outputs, which are shown as datasets within the Galaxy UI. For the input and output QC, there is a dataset called the web report. When opened from within the Galaxy UI, the report presents a multi-tap interface coded with JavaScript. The tabs contain dynamic tables with per-sample status and per contic assembly metrics, drag-and-drop pivot tables for aggregating the metrics, IGVJS HTML5 genome browser view, with the final output contigs aligned against a subset of common references, multi-QC aggregated web report for the reads before and after trimming, and a page with links to various outputs for direct download. 
The user can select a specific sample either from the assembly matrix table or from the contig level genome browser view and drill down to the IGVJS views of individual reads mapped to both best matching reference and assembly context. The table with per sample status can be used to easily assess present substance of the target gene across the entire batch of samples according to the configured filtering cutoffs. The complete archived report itself can be downloaded and easily viewed on a different system without Galaxy using a basic static web server. We designed NGS MSTB to optionally serve as a transient computational module reading inputs from the access controlled and audited sequencing read store and sending outputs to the clinically validated audited system of record SOR. The objective was to formally validate the entire system for use in strain surveillance components of the clinical trials. Cryptographic checksums mixed with a secret key available only to the Galaxy server are computed and stored with each intermediate Galaxy dataset produced by the tools, which the analyst has to run in the assembly protocol, namely the manifest builder, the Ariba pack builder and the extractor tool. Each downstream tool in turn uses these checksums to verify the integrity of its input datasets. This protects against the anal analyst downloading the intermediate datasets and then modifying and re-uploading them into Galaxy for using the subsequent steps. This functionality is implemented as two generic macro called in the Galaxy tool XML file and without any modifications to the Galaxy code. A provenance file in YAML format is generated by recursively querying Galaxy API to describe the entire chain of jobs executed by the analyst, the parameters of each job with their associated UI labels, as well as inputs and outputs. This machine and human readable file allows the analyst to later reproduce a historical run through the UI. This file is pushed into the system of record as part of a complete provenance pack. Our Galaxy tools already use conditional UI elements where certain parameter choices by the analyst would modify the default value of other UI parameters. Because we pre-validated certain combinations of parameters as the most appropriate for staff Oreo alpha toxin assembly, for instance, we have coded a master preset pull-down into our tools that allowed choosing between generic unvalidated targets and validated alpha toxin target. When choosing the validated preset, uh, the analyst fixes the remaining dependent parameters and no longer able to change them. In order to make validation practical, we achieved a complete determinism of the backend workflow. Code uh, is instrumented with computation of checksums to allow tracing byte identity of the final and intermediate outputs of a multi-replicated testing runs of hundreds of benchmarking samples with the procedure executed as part of the automated testing harness. Based on that analysis, multiple modifications to the workflow were introduced to provide fully deterministic execution mode as a runtime option. The changes mostly involved sorting the outputs of various multi-threaded programs and in some cases a special handling of degenerate inputs with very few recruited reads. Combined with the, multiple immu combined with the immutable dataset paradigm already built into Galaxy, the backend determinism ensures that the analyst can repeat the processing with the same inputs and parameters any number of times and always generate the same results. Examples of published studies that relied on NGS MSTB for assembly include respiratory syncytial virus surveillance studies that sequenced either a complete gene or more specific genes of interest, alpha toxin gene sequence extraction from WGS data in Staphylococcus aureus surveillance study in the phase 2 clinical trial, assembly of a complete adeno-associated viral vector in the gene therapy platform development. Thousands more RSV sequences were assembled in the ongoing strain surveillance studies and reported at various conferences. The software is distributed with a built-in interactive tutorial workflow Galaxy Tour that guides the user through the assembly of two complete RSV genomes and their comparison to the curated ground truth genomes obtained from the alternative Sanger sequencing data. 
Alignment of the NGS reads and NGS MSTB context to the Sanger derived reference demonstrates an agreement including positions where both technologies detect degenerate bases due to mixed samples. Some unpublished experiments demonstrated ability of the Edinova assembly pipeline to tolerate extreme variability of coverage along the genome from 1,700,000x coverage to 8x coverage along the same genome reference based on HPV sequencing samples. Ability to correctly assemble a complete COVID-19 genome. CWL is a platform-independent workflow language under a community-driven standard. That makes it an attractive choice for a software that should be validated in a regulated environment. I was writing and editing CWL by hand in order to version it in Git. Writing CWL by hand is very tedious because the underlying YAML is a data description language rather than a programming language. Debugging and modifying is even more labor intensive and nice training. The main reason is that reading a single statement requires scanning both left to right as well as up and down. For example, a loop statement in a procedural pseudocode would read naturally left to right on a single line something like for x from 0 to 10 do this. In CWL that becomes a scatter statement defined as a YAML object organized on multiple lines with keys and corresponding values on each line. Another drawback is that any non-trivial reshaping of the input or output arrays has to be done with JavaScript expression, which imposes a dual language penalty model right there. It is still better to have at least some access to a general purpose programming language for data reshaping rather than no access as it is enforced in Widdle, for example. A typical comment on such criticism of the CWL is an advice to use Rabix CWL generator. Rabix, or rather its web-only incarnation that lives in the Seven Bridges platform, does indeed a lot to address the major pain points described above. However, there were reasons why humans invented written languages and started using them in place of communicating with pictures. This comes down to a debate about the places of the no-code and full-code approaches to the software development. I personally belong to the full-code camp. You can read eloquent advocacy of that approach in the postings by the R Studio team on the value of the code-based data science. However, the Rabix platform is moving to substantially merge the two paradigms by allowing for a round-trip transition between the GUI-based CW generation and the code editor. A couple of things that were missing when I checked the last time were maintaining the stable line order when saving the CWL file, which is important for Git versioning, and loading of external sub-workflows by reference instead of by merging them. Rabix is a dynamic product, so things might have improved by now. My understanding is that the new CWL standard includes conditional steps, and this is an essential feature for writing complex IO-efficient workflows for the cloud environment. The summary is once the proper effort on designing and debugging the workflow has been invested, the result appears to be quite stable and efficient. I have developed NGS MSTB when I worked for MedImmune, which was part of AstraZeneca. The package was developed in response to their needs in the space of strain surveillance. They have generously open sourced the software and the benchmarking data. My collaborators on the AstraZeneca projects are listed here. Depending on their role, they either formulated the requirements or contributed to the validation and testing of the software on real-world data. I am currently employed by Kite Pharma and presenting this work independently and unrelated to my current employment. However, I am grateful to Kite Pharma for allowing the opportunity to present at this conference. Thank you for listening.